Today's video is sponsored by Curology. Start your Curology journey today by clicking the link in the description of this video. Today the vibes are cozy. Hey y'all, it's me, Bus. What are we gonna call myself today? Hey y'all, it's me. Hey y'all, it's me, Brosy King. And welcome back to Hot or Hot where we'll be reviewing part one of what Drag Race is building an epic two-part premiere of RuPaul's Drag Race season 16, which is crazy. Like, can y'all believe it? Another season of RuPaul's Drag Race on this God-loving, God-fearing Christian Mingle channel? <laughs> God help us all. Anyways, the first half of our season 16 cast was challenged to show us their talents and on the runway, reveal themselves. <laughs> Bro, I'm about to reveal myself into a cooler outfit because this sweater is too hot. Ugh. Also, kitty update. Look how big she is. That's a big girl. That's a big girl. Hi, say hi. That's my baby. She's mad because she knows I'm about to kick her out of the studio so that I can record in peace. <laughs> Okay, we love you, say bye. Anyways, the twist of the season is that I've already done a reveal and the girls are gonna be judging themselves through a new Rata Queen system. With the bigger twist on the twist of the twist being that the girls are gonna be competing for immunity, something Drag Race hasn't had since season five. We'll circle back around on that later. First up and in the order they performed in the talent show, Morphine Love Dion, who's reportedly and allegedly 100% natural. And in the challenge, we see Morphine continue to hyper-focus on the aesthetic and look of her drag. It is so severe. And I love what she has done with that swoopy hair and that gorgeous red gown. The look is on point. And the Rosalia track she chose for her talent show number was super fun. And I loved the moment when she was like dropping into the splits, but like made us wait a second before she got to the end of them and was counting her cash. But I also felt like we ended the number and I was kind of sitting there wondering what's next or what did I really get from that that was super new and different? Which is, I guess, me really honestly being spoiled by some really crazy drag race numbers of yesteryear and this being the first on this season. So did I want a little more goop and gag, especially when she is essentially just dancing to somebody else's track? Yes, but I also wasn't too mad about it. So I'm gonna give this performance a very safe three flame. <laughs> but over on the runway, <laughs> we've got another story. She comes out in what she describes as a designer couture towel dress, which I'm sure is accurate. But what are we doing here? What are we really doing here? When the towel comes out, it very obviously is a towel and I'm not really getting high fashion. I'm not getting runway from it. I'm getting, oh, she was just in the shower. I'm sorry, ma'am. I'll come back later. But I'm like, oh no, this is just the show. And somehow as this look goes down the runway, it continues to get worse. It comes off and it starts to look like mummy bandages, which side note could have been really cool if she had leaned into like the camp and Halloween gore of that, but she didn't. And she's wearing a bodysuit style to look like a bathing suit underneath the towel. <laughs> you can't say she does not look mugged. She's very pretty. But the outfit is just bad in both forms. There's no bigger dramatic silhouette or story about who this queen is. And she is just wearing a bathing suit on the first episode of RuPaul's Drag Race season 16. So this look, I'm going to give a rat. Well, that towel just really left her out to dry. Also, Shalise Saron <laughs> looking this queen dead in the eyes and saying, I was fully satisfied by this. <laughs> I was like, bitch, give her another Oscar. She is so good at what she does. Oh, and by the way, Happy New Year's! Which reminds me to announce that this year I'm setting one goal, to stay confident in my skin, which is why I'm thankful that Curology, the sponsor of today's video, has helped me work on that goal every single day. In fact, Curology's simple three-step routine has been keeping my skin consistently clear now for just over two years, and I couldn't be happier with the results. I mean, really, get the close up. Closer, closer, back up a little bit, right there. But seriously, wow. Thanks, Curology. Here's how it works. First, I wash my face with Curology's Acne Cleanser, formulated with benzoyl peroxide to treat and help prevent acne. Effective, but gentle enough for everyday use. Then I apply my custom formula prescribed to me by a Curology dermatology provider. This is the secret sauce that keeps my skin free of breakouts, clogged pores, and blackheads. And finally, I apply the Curology Rich Moisturizer with Hyaluronic Acid and Shea Butter. Simple, yet extremely effective. And when I started my Curology journey, I first noticed my breakouts were less frequent and less severe after just a couple of weeks. 
weeks. And over time, I've noticed improvements in my skin's overall tone and texture, plus a reduction in oiliness in my T-zone. Remember though, your results may vary. To get started with Curology, just click the link below. On their site, you'll take a quick quiz to assess your skincare needs and upload three selfies. Then a dermatology provider will take a look at everything and prescribe you a custom formula and skincare routine to work alongside it. And if you've ever got any questions, a Curology dermatology provider is just one click away in the messages tab of the Curology portal, where you can also manage upcoming shipments and add new things to your box, like emergency spot patches for those overnight emergencies, the Curology sunscreen, which I have to remind you not to sleep on even in winter, and of course my all-time favorite, the Curology lip balm. Mmm, so juicy. So what are you waiting for? Take action on your New Year's goals and get confident in your skin by starting your Curology journey today. Just click the link in the description of my video right now. Thanks Curology for sponsoring today's video. And next up, call your coworkers. We've got a mandatory meeting. Who in the challenge is performing to an original number about the location or dislocation of her kitty cat? And yes, a kitty cat inspired outfit. When you look closely, you can kind of see like the nails or claws are these waist peplum moments and she's got some cat eyes somewhere sewn into the outfit. Cat, kitty, cat, cat, meow, meow. And I'll say this queen was a ball of energy, which I think both worked for and against her in this performance. In the four column being that the unrivaled and unmatched chaos of this queen when compared with the rest of the cast was very entertaining. But all this chaotic entertainment started to look really frantic and lacking intentionality in some of the dancing. And I think at the level she gave it, it would be great in a club. But ready for the stage? Not quite yet. I wanted a little more finessing. So I'm gonna give this a soft rock. And over on the runway, oh my god, girl, chaos, madness, and confusion embodied in a person. She comes out and she is giving a little homage to Lee Bowery. The wig falls off before she even gets on the runway. And she's got the face Kenny all zipped up. She's got, I mean, it's a mess. Then she comes down the runway and reveals herself to be a purple alien with a third chest member, which is great, but... There is a question I have for her, and it is, when did you lose control of this outfit? Because <laughs> Miss Girl, the green slick back wig, the crazy purple makeup, and then like the, the beige flesh toned arms and legs that she has going on with the heels that don't match either of the outfits. This is bad. It is so bad. It is actually, I think, one of the worst looks that's ever been on RuPaul's Drag Race ever? Which really, I think, starts to beg the question, is it so bad that it's good? Or is it possible that she has achieved nirvana in this? Because I, I do wonder, what is she seeing that I'm not? But I'm gonna give this look 50 shades of rat. And next up, rise and shine, we've got a new Dawn, who in the talent show is giving us a really interesting combination of Dr. Seuss slam poetry meets crash landing at Area 51 burlesque fashion show. And from start to finish, she makes it clear her talent is giving the viewers a visual treat from the very first outfit where she comes out of a caution bag and then has her sleeves taken off and the different parts are exposed, have all these other layers of animal print fabrics and fuzz balls and the hot dog fingers. How do those get there? Like everything about what she's doing is so interesting, great for TV. And I think demonstrates she's got a great handle on who this crazy kooky character of Dawn really is. Dawn's talent was hot. And over on the runway, the visual treats continue. Mmm, tasty. And our first look of her too is this giant abominable fur yeti, which is creepy but cute. A way that I am actually thinking a lot of her drag looks to me creepy but cute. And all the details she has in her looks are so great. Like this one being like the tongue is not just a tongue, but it's strips of red bedazzled fabric coming down the front. And her reveal is she's got frostbite, but make it sexy. And he's very unsure with these oversized sleeves, making this look an oversized pot. Oh, I'm being real crazy for y'all today. Woo! I'm a little kooky. I'm a little crazy. I'm not like the other girls. <laughs> This is our kooky crazy girl of the season, okay? She has made it clear. Her name is Roxy Andrews and she is here to make it clear. She is not like the other girls. And next up, Q. Uh, 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 Q. Who in the talent show takes us all the way to Q's puppet playhouse? Cause everybody loves puppets. Especially RuPaul. Girl, Miss RuPaul with those red gloves and the... <laughs> The red glove scarf. Miss Mother Roo, that was too much, and you know it. And in Q's Puppet Playhouse, she is both the puppeteer and the puppet of her very own ballet performance where her little tippy toes are actually the tippy tips of her fingers. And every single part of this from top to bottom is so stupid and so perfectly stupid, right? This is exactly the level of dumb that we need to take these talent shows if we want to get some entertainment value out of them because we have seen so many queens with their heels click clacking about out lip syncing to some original bitch track. But how many times have we seen a queen? <laughs> 
have half of her body up there doing ballet puppetry with her hands looking like beat. That was special. And I actually don't love puppets, but this was hot. <laughs> and over on the runway, we get to see Q vomit her charisma, uniqueness, nerve, and talent all over the stage. She came out as a, like a black sparkly moth with these giant antennae coming up on top. Very drama, very dramatic, very like, ooh, dark woman, lady mistress of the night. Where is she going? Who is she? And then she comes to the end of the runway and she explodes into these giant rainbow, like neon rainbow even, crazy wings that she does a little twirl in. Like the level of craftsmanship applied to create this look. It's like, wow, you really love and appreciate the art of drag that you're putting on your body. And also it must be said, Jasmine Masters got into that cocoon back on season seven so that you could flap her wings in part one of the season 16 premiere. And that's hot. And next up, was she ever really there? It's Mirage. Who for the talent show is giving us a little heels click clack and about lady who derobes herself type of performance, monetization safe, with a heavy focus on the click clacking of the heels in question. Which I'm highlighting because I think that in and of itself was fairly unique for the Drag Race variety show, talent show extravaganza performances. But I wanted a bigger focus on the heel clacks throughout the performance and more intentionality in her dancing. Because as Michelle called out in the critiques, it did appear maybe this wasn't the most rehearsed thing. Like she kind of was just flopping and rolling and tumbling into the next dance move. <laughs> Which didn't make a lot of sense thematically, I think, with the staccato nature of the heels clacking and the pacing of the song. And her other mistake, I think, was mentioning Anitra's name in her track. Because as fun as it was to hear her name, it also does make us think of Anitra, who, let's remember, won her season's talent show with, you know, her sickening duck walking abilities. And she's inviting us to make this direct comparison, but unfortunately, it's not in her favor. So for what Miss Mirage gave in today's episode, I'm going to give a warming... And over on the runway, the many layers of Mirage continue to unravel. She is the runway and she's giving us like a little Y2K Vegas showgirl meets flower bouquet silhouette. And I was immediately intrigued with the orange and blue colors, which I think are fairly unique in the drag race stage. And she definitely made her mark in giving an aesthetic that stands out tonight. And we can see she's having so much fun as she takes off the layers of the feather collars and the other parts of the outfit that reveal to more and more of Mirage's self. Like there's just something about her that is, I think, really intriguing and makes me want more. Gimme, give gimme give more. This look is hot. And next up, TikTokers watch out. It's Tsunami Muse. <laughs> what? A lot to say about TikTokers the other day in the press. But could she walk a big walk? Let's look at what she did this episode. In the challenge, she's performing yet another original bitch track, which I do have to give her and her producer some credit on. I think that it was a fun rap that had a good pacing and beat. And her lip sync of that rap was, I think, generally good. But the actual performance that she was really giving in this talent show was just not a lot of much. There was a lot of walking to the front. There was a lot of walking to the back, turning around and walking to the front and walking to the back while she lip synced, of course, but there was no payoff. There was no visual component to this like fun song that we're hearing. And there's so much she could have done too, right? Like as the judges pointed out, a reveal in the beginning would have gone a long way. I mean, hell, for a dance track, maybe even, I don't know, the splits. <laughs> Not that I can do the splits, but like, if your talent is gonna be dancing, I wanna see a little dancing. So I'm gonna give this performance a and over on the runway, Ms. Tsunami Muse has not one, not two, but three selves to reveal. And firstly, throughout all three looks, the mug was mugging and the hair was hairing. That was my first observation. She looks right here, perfect. And in the first look, she's got a red coat on, kind of giving some standing on business CEO realness here. And for her second look, maybe she leaves the meeting room and goes out into the holiday office party with her little cocktail dress on, which is very pretty. And then the third look where she, you know, finally slips into something a little more comfortable and maybe enjoys the company of another person. We don't know. And what I want to point out is she served three solid looks on the runway. She did not look bad in any of these looks, but were any of the looks bigger than life or really telling us who Zunami Muse is and how she she stands out and is different from the rest of the pack. You know, she didn't show us anything about her or herself. She was just like, here's a cute outfit. Here's another cute outfit. And here's another cute outfit. But I want to gag. I want to choke. <laughs> I should have parked that. Anyways, but I'm gonna give her a very safe hot for the runway because she met the brief and gave us three good looks. And last but certainly not least, Safira Crystal, who for her talent show gives us a little bit of an opera song moment, but an opera song that really leans into that deep yearning for heat, beautiful men and forgiveness. She's literally, first of all, singing live, I think over a backing track to be fair, but nonetheless singing live, the only one who did that tonight and singing in opera, singing opera, singing in opera, opera, Oppenheimer. 
But let's be for real, for real on God No Cap. She gathered the other girls up with this. This talent show, easily the best of the bunch for me. Like the look, the presentation of what she is doing with this operatic fantasy, gorgeous. And the music sounds so serious and beautiful and yearnful. With the goop and the gag, she's got the lyrics translated and displayed next to her, which are saying things that might not traditionally be said in an opera song. The look was knocked out of the park. The opera singing itself, a great talent. And the comedy of the mistranslated lyrics is just an extra cherry on top of an overall amazingly <laughs> performance. Daddy, forgive me. Or how do you say that in opera? <laughs> but over on the runway, I wasn't as impressed. Her first look, I think, of the three she ultimately serves was the best. It was kind of giving me Lady Gaga, Countess, and American Horror Story vibes. But it starts to really unravel as the look unravels and she reveals the other outfits beneath. The second one in particular was really confusing for me because it looks like halfway between one outfit and another and not in a good or intentional way. And then when that part comes off, which comes off in a very cool way, that reveal was very clean. But the bodysuit this look reveals into is just a little whelming for me, like when compared, I think, with the dramaticness of everything else we've seen from her this episode. And then the final step of her reveal is taking off the top of the bodysuit and revealing herself a la Mirage. Except the self that <laughs> the Sabira Cristal is revealing is very much giving like, Pringle cans. Very much long cylindrical tubes <laughs> attached to her chest. And it's so weird because these Pringle cans were so tragic, but at the same time, also part of what ended up making the last part of this runway okay and entertaining. Because it was just like, yes, let's let's lean into the chaos and madness of whatever is happening in this look. But overall, daddy forgive me. This was a so for tops and bottoms of this episode, the goop and the gag is the queens actually get to rate themselves. Well, actually everyone except themselves because they weren't allowed to rank themselves in their rankings, but their mishmash of one through six rankings of their peers' overall performance in the episode gets translated into a top two of Q and Safira Cristal and a bottom two of nobody at all because nothing matters, nothing's real. And a bottom two of nobody, because the other final twist of the episode is nobody's going home. But we do get to see Safira and Q lip sync to Beyonce's Break My Soul, which I did react to on Patreon at patreon.com slash bussyqueen. That's my members only website where I upload exclusive content like those reaction videos and give early access to my YouTube videos. And you can join my Patreon, help support the channel and get those exclusive member benefits today, right now by clicking the link in the description of this video. See you there. And this lip sync was interesting to me because it seemed there were a few moments where maybe Safira was missing some lyrics or her lip sync just wasn't as tight as Q's. But I probably still would ultimately give her the win for this lip sync because I think she had a stronger finish in the song. Whereas we saw Q start off really hot, but then I think she struggled to find pacing and bring the lip sync to new levels, which was kind of boring. And it was like, oh, well, you know, what's Safira doing? She's slang. Okay, great, she wins. But now let's talk final thoughts and hottest hots. So I've really got to say the talent show thing at this point, I feel like is getting a little overdone, especially when advertised as a talent show where we ultimately see a bunch of queens dancing to like some original track. And don't get me wrong, there have been a lot of great dancing to original track performances in Drag Race, but we've seen so many of them and most of them land in the like generally good area of hot to rot, right? And since we have so many queens, I think capable of looking like and performing at this good level, it makes reaching those higher highs really difficult. And I think does truly separate who has the actual star quality in this competition and who doesn't. That said, we definitely had some flashes of great tonight. And I think the cast is really cool with a lot of interesting personalities that I think will make for great TV. A mandatory meeting? I'm looking at you. And considering the real twist of the episode, the immunity that Safira Cristal won in the lip sync against Q, I very much have a question mark and a raised eyebrow to the specific way in which RuPaul is talking about this immunity. She keeps saying, you will earn immunity from a future elimination, which is a very specific way to phrase the idea of somebody winning immunity. Like she's not just saying, you'll be safe from the bottom two, or you won't go home next week. She is saying, you will not go home sometime in the future 
if you are told to go home. Like to me, it just sounds like RuPaul is saying, if we wanna use you as a pawn in the bottom to send somebody else home, we now can and will under the guise of you having immunity. But I guess we'll see. And now finally for your hottest haunts this episode, for the talent show, I'm gonna give it to Safira Crystal and on the runway, Dawn. And I, of course, also asked my patrons to vote on their hottest hots over at patreon.com slash queen. And they've chosen Safira Crystal in the challenge and Q on the runway. And I wanna give one last shout out to Curology the easiest and most effective skincare I have ever used in my entire life. Which, by the way, did I mention comes straight to my doorstep so I never run out of product? It's awesome. So I want to give a huge thanks to Curology and remind you that you can start your Curology journey today by clicking the link in the description of this video. Thanks, Curology, for helping me stay confident in my skin every single day. And lastly, I want to give an extra special thanks to Ashley Brungart, Child Free Matto, Dorothy Hall, Fa, Leisha, Frankie, Farah, Matthew Burns, Sailor, Steven, Topher, Tyler, Hendrix, MD, and Will and Tana, who are all supporting me at my Bussy Queen collection tier over at patreon.com slash Queen. Love ya. Bye. I said what I said, and a lot of people heard it, but nobody was listening.